with, with, it, with actually my name or can I just say what I do? Um, with your name. Okay. So my name is Federico Pistono, at least that's the name I was given as my first identity. I write books about the future. I write sci-fis, uh, science fiction novels, uh, I write non-fiction, usually about the future of society, future of work, future of humanity. When I first started using the internet, that was in 1994, I was one of the few first people in Italy actually to use the internet. I remember in my region there were only seven connections allowed at the same time and then I would just wait for that light to go on and keep being on and make that sound. Just hoping it would stay on so I could be online. Our identities have actually been reduced uh, because we use standardized names. Uh, it started with Facebook and then Google kind of followed the train and most pseudonyms have disappeared from the internet. Uh, unless you use forums or darknets. And, um, but in most social media or commercial internet, uh, your identity is kind, of, is kind of the same with different facets of it. So you are slightly different. You have a slightly different identity on Facebook than you have on Google, than you have on Twitter, but everybody knows it's you. It's just a different version of you you could really have different identities. This, this sentence that I'm going to say, it's a bit cheesy, but it's kind of true, but not really true. Um, a Maasai warrior in the middle of the savanna in Africa has more access to information than the president of the United States did just 25 years ago. That, that kind of changes things. Um, and I think the way it changes it, it changes the way you relate to your environment. Not much with yourself, but with others. And especially, I think, has changed the, the idea of community. So we kind of extended our sense of community, and we have an extended family now that kind of, it's, it keeps growing. And as it grows, we evolve culturally and, and ethically. Fra Bartolome de las Casas theorized that um, these people living in the Amazon forest or in, uh, you know, in South America, in the New Continent, they were not subhuman, they were not homunculi. They were actually humans, just like us. It just looked slightly different. And that was completely revolutionary. Because how could you say that? How, how could you justify genocide of hundreds of millions of people if they were just like us? Because we thought they were not people. And so we gave rights to them. And then uh, uh, abolished slavery. And then we gave rights to women. And now we're giving rights to homosexuals. And now we're starting to give rights to animals. I never understood. In fact, I don't, I don't real. I don't um, subscribe to the expression um, real life and virtual life or life on the internet. Or I call it AFK because away from keyboard, I think the internet is real. Well, the physical world can be irrelevant yet because um, even your very, the very entity of, I mean, the, the person in front of a computer or in front of a phone, interacting has to exist in the physical world. And even if it, and even 50 years from now, if there is mind uploading, that mind is inside a freaking computer which is exists in the physical realm. And the internet itself is part of physical realm. I, I think the distinction, the distinction between physical and virtual is mostly meaningless. And very soon it will be blended and blurred in a way that is indistinguishable. You'll be walking and you will see You'll be walking on the street and you'll be seeing augmented reality that actually feels just like real reality. Um, you will see that tree and you'll be like, I wonder what that tree is. And you will see every information about the tree and what it looked like uh, when it was summer and what it's going to look like uh, maybe 20 years from now. Uh, or, uh, you know, you could do all sorts of things and you'll be interacting with virtual and physical objects um, simultaneously in a very compelling and blended way. And I think there would be some sort of way to recognize, to have hints which is virtual and which is just because of logistical reasons. Like you're walking on the street, you don't want to 
think, oh, that car is virtual and <laughs> For example, the internet has augmented my um, physical interactions with other people and my uh, friendships. Now I have, I have literally friends from maybe 50 countries and I have acquaintances from 120 countries. Uh, I mean, people I have actually met in the real world and I talk to them and I interact with them and that would not have been possible without the internet. I could have maybe met people from 10, 20, 15 countries, I don't know. Um, between, you know, couch surfing, the books I wrote, the world tour, the university, the all sorts of uh, social movements that I've started and people that I've met through the internet and then, I mean, I've connected through the internet and then I've met in person, thanks to the internet. That is something that just was, was not even conceivable. The title said, oh, look at those, all of those people with, you know, these alienating technologies never talking to each other. It was a picture from 1870 in a train. Everybody had a copy of a newspaper and they were reading the newspaper. And before that, there were stone tablets. And before stone tablet, people were playing with rocks. I mean, if, if you want to get your mind off of the external world and just focus on something, or people reading books or whatever, um, th you can always do that in, in any way. You can look at the sky and not look at other people. Uh, the point is, it's, it's now easier to get distracted, um, but it's a choice. Like, why would you be fidgeting and checking your phone every five minutes if there is somebody interesting next to you, if you value that connection? I think it's because um, we, uh, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a problem of cell phones or technology. I think it's a problem that we, in general, as a society, we, we like the short reward of always being constantly fidgeting and checking something that gives me just a little bit of endorphins just a tiny little bit, that's what games do, that's why they're addicting. Um, but it's actually much more meaningful to restrain yourself and actually have a much deeper and greater appreciation um, of the moment.